Build your dreams. That's the motto. That's the brand, in fact. BYD is a Chinese brand that is new to the UK, and it's coming this spring with this, the Atto 3. Is it the stuff of dreams then? Well, I think probably not for most people, but it does look like an intriguing and surprisingly competent uh, electric crossover. Now, for some context, this is roughly the size of a Nissan Qashqai. So you're talking about a car that's in between a Volkswagen ID3 and a Volkswagen ID4. MG ZS EV is certainly a rival. Kia Nero uh, EV and the high-end Icona electric, real core territory for the BYD. Now, interestingly, you might assume that BYD is going to come to the UK with budget as its kind of top priority, but it is being pitched as something of a bit of a premium option. I think they're really targeting the Korean brands on that level, and I believe that the BYD, they haven't confirmed prices. I think it's going to be probably about £40,000 and up for the Atto 3. Now, before we go into the specs of the Atto 3, I want to have a little walk around and look at it, and I want to talk about BYD, the company, as well. So, talking about the premiumness of the Atto 3, this... It's actually got a really nice door shut. It's not bad, you know, it's pretty good. The damping on the handle, you're talking about your uh, continental tyres there. It's actually not a bad looking thing. A bit bland, maybe. It's kind of derivative of all kinds of different things. I'm seeing Volkswagen, I'm seeing a bit of Vauxhall, I'm seeing all sorts of stuff. So definitely a little derivative, but also it's not offensive, is it? I think it looks quite clean and smart and fine. And uh, I think that BYD could do really big things, not only because of the Atto 3 itself, but because the company is very interesting. BYD is probably the biggest company that you've never heard of. It is huge. It manufactures everything on this vehicle and in this vehicle itself, apart from the glass and the tyres. I'm talking the motors, the upholstery inside it, uh, the batteries, the semiconductors. It is absolutely vast. And not only that, but actually, as a global company, it also manufactures solar panels, it does trains. It's responsible largely for the buses in London as well, the double-decker buses. This is a proper kind of enormous corporation. And you're talking about a company that employs probably close to 300,000 people. Uh, it is actually the biggest manufacturer for new energy vehicles, is how they describe it. So meaning battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrids in China. Tesla sells more electric vehicles, but on that basis, BYD is the biggest for passenger vehicles as well. They sold uh, something like 225,000 cars last month. This is not a startup we're talking about. And let's put it this way, they manufacture everything themselves. So they have access to those parts, which means they immediately have a head start over their rivals because they can get cars and they can get them to the customers quickly. Which brings us on to the ownership stuff. BYD is starting its sales of the Atto 3 using a number of well-established local dealer franchises in the UK. It's a fairly traditional buying process. You can configure the car online, you can see all of the details, but you can actually go to the dealership to see the car, have a test drive, talk to the salesman and finalise your purchase there, be it cash, finance or indeed subscription. You also get a four-year unlimited mileage warranty on the car and an eight-year 100,000 mile warranty on the battery. Speaking of batteries, it is well worth taking a moment to talk about the batteries in the Atto 3 because it uses BYD's new blade technology. Now these are lithium ion phosphate batteries, so different chemistry actually to the lithium ion batteries that we're used to. They're also in a different format, so they run in thin cells that kind of run the length of the car, so blades effectively, so not the sort of rectangular cells in packs that we're used to. More than that, they are cobalt free, which is good for any number of reasons, so that's really good news. BYD also claim that they're going to last longer, so I'm looking forward to seeing some estimates from them and seeing some data from the cars on degradation on these batteries. They have also proven that they are really safe because they've actually done a nail test on these batteries. They've literally hammered a nail into them, thereby obviously uh, allowing air into the cells. And traditionally, this can be a huge problem because it can cause a fire in the battery. With these, it actually doesn't. The batteries stay within a reasonable temperature and they don't combust. So that's a really good aspect for safety. So these batteries, although perhaps not proven as well as lithium ion technology that we're very familiar with now, they really could be a game changer, I think. It is based on the company's new e-platform 3, it gets 201 brake horsepower, front wheel drive, and it has got an official range of 261 miles from a 60.5 kilowatt hour battery. The boot in the Atto 3 is a good size at 440 litres, and there's some cable storage under the floor, but sadly none in the nose of the car. 
there is masses of space in the back seats of the Atto 3. It's really quite impressive. And I would also point out that the seat squab that you sit on, it's really sort of soft and squishy and very deep. So it's really quite comfy. I quite like the finish in here as well, talking about the quality that BYD is aiming to achieve and the sort of brand that it wants to compete with. It feels really decent back here. Even the styling of these sort of single piece seats, the finish around here, you've got pockets for your phone as well as for your, you know, your map pockets and things. It's all pretty decent, actually. I do think that headroom isn't brilliant. That is one quibble I do have. I quite like the door handle. It's a bit novel, isn't it? It uh, lights up as well and you've got a little speaker in there. I think that's quite cool. Also really quite nicely damped. And down here, while we're talking about novelties, you've got your own little kind of inbuilt guitar almost. I think the theory is that these look cool and also hold a bottle into the door. But for anybody who's got kids, I mean, how quickly is that? going to get annoying in traffic on the M25 on the way home. Are we nearly there yet? Are we nearly there yet? Are we nearly there yet? Yeah. I don't think it'd last long in my car, I have to say. <laughs> the Atto 3's dash is focused on the huge touchscreen that can be flipped to offer portrait or landscape use. UK trim levels haven't been confirmed, but expect the Atto 3 to be very well equipped with a full suite of tech and comfort features as standard. The interior of the Atto 3, as we've already said, really does focus on this touchscreen, but let's not overlook the styling in here because I think it's very odd that BYD have gone to great lengths to make this car really quite European specific. They've uh, partnered with various European companies, with Bosch and various others to make all the setup right on the dynamics, the brakes, all of this kind of thing. There's lots of aspects of it. Um, they've got a European team, they've got European everything in terms of tailoring this to European tastes. And then they've gone with this interior, which I find really strange because it's just so over the top and not very European in taste, I have to say. Um, I think to me, this feels like it's actually very Chinese market, this interior. And um, I don't know, to, to my mind, it's a bit like driving around in a JML boombox from the 90s or something. It's just the colours and the kind of very in your face sort of finish, this sort of clicky plastics down here. Um, it's all very peculiar and yet the perceived quality is actually really good. So the materials feel really good. It's all kind of like properly built. The steering wheel is lovely, nice sort of slim steering wheel, which makes, you know, the detailing in here makes it all the more frustrating and a bit odd that the design is so in your face and I don't think is going to be to the taste of most buyers in Europe. Nonetheless, it's a really nice place to sit. It's going to have all the equipment that you want as standard, I'm sure. And, you know, other than this dash architecture, I think BYD have done a good job. The Atto 3 charges via a Type 2 and CCS socket, just like almost every other new electric car, and it'll be compatible with the vast majority of public chargers. Max charging rates top out at 88 kilowatts, which will get you a 10 to 80% charge in around 35 minutes. Plug into a home wall box and it'll be fully charged in under 10 hours. As for real world range in the Atto 3, we haven't really spent enough time in it to gauge accurately, so watch this space. However, we would say that it has a heat pump as standard and you can precondition the cabin, so if we had to estimate, then we'd say you'll see around 220 to 250 miles in the summer, while winter will probably see that range drop to more like 160 to 190 miles. So, the next question is what is the Atto 3 like to drive? Thankfully, the answer is actually really very good. So you've got your standard drive modes down here, sport, eco, and normal. Stick it in sport for a minute and you've got nice, quite heavy steering. It weights up quite a lot in sport. But what I would say is that it's got quite a decent front end, this car. You can really sort of chuck it into a corner and it feels very nice and confident. There is a lot of body lean. So you do really feel it kind of swaying about a bit if you do go through kind of a faster direction change. But generally, it's got all of the performance you want and I think the most impressive thing is that it just feels very refined, very confident and really comfortable. So you can enjoy a decent road in it. Um, you have to really kind of use it to get that kind of fun from it, but it's absolutely fine. And like I said, more importantly, it's very refined. There's absolutely no vibration through the steering wheel, through the pedals. I suppose to an extent that sort of makes it feel a bit detached. But in reality, I think that's what most people are going to actually enjoy from this car is how very refined it is. I think the thing that could definitely be better is brake feel, particularly low speed brake feel. It can be quite grabby, uh, but apart from that, it's good. Brake regen, you've got a couple of different modes. It's quite easy to predict in both of those modes. I wish that was easier to control on the, on the 
steering wheel or even with a button down here rather than in the screen as it is but it's all just well judged this feels like a very easy car to just get in and drive immediately and it's just very predictable and easy to use actually again to mention the sort of perceived quality don't get me wrong at this price you know bmws audis mercedes all that stuff that all feels on a different league to this car but in comparison to kia and hyundai and even volkswagen i actually think that the sort of quality that you get in the byd isn't far off at all i think it's it's actually could worry quite a lot of the other big manufacturers out there on that front and I think that's largely due to the tech as well, because the tech you get in here, like the quality of the reversing camera on here, the quality of the graphics on the screen, it's really, really good. Even the voice control that you get, you get natural voice control, and she seems to respond pretty well, actually, when I've, when I've tried it out in here. So the tech all feels really up there. It does feel very, um, pretty classy. I would add this screen, like I said, really very good, but it's party trick where it rotates. Well, it's very cool, but actually it's not great when you're driving because it means that you have this kind of screen and it really can kind of impede your vision up the road. I find it a bit obtrusive. I don't really like that. I mean, it's clever that it does it, I suppose, but it does feel like maybe a little bit of a gimmick. Ride comfort's not bad at all. It seems to be very good in terms of its damping, quite loose spring comfort. Um, so like I said, lots of body movement, but the actual damping on it really does seem to be very effective. So. I'd I think it might work really well on UK roads. We'll have to wait and see, especially if on these 18 inch wheels that it's on in this car here. So overall, I think the Atto 3 is actually a really well judged car. It's a really good package, but I'm more impressed with BYD, the company, and what this car represents for them, specifically the tech that they're bringing, not just the touchscreen, but the battery tech. This car, is actually um, the platform that it's on. It can take 800 volt charging, so there's every likelihood that models coming in the very near future are gonna be ultra rapid charging, just like you know the Porsche Taycan and the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6. It's got vehicle to load charging now. It will have vehicle to grid as well. They have said that. We know that they're gonna do a small car. We know that they've got the parts access. They've really got it all going for them. I just think that the Atto is fine, but not exceptional given what else is out there. And with this dash, finish in particular i'm not sure it's going to really cater to european tastes but apart from that even if the atto 3 isn't specifically the model that really brings byd's best game i do think that the company as a whole has got everything that it needs to be a huge disruptor in the market head to cargurus.co.uk for a whole host of fantastic used cars please do like the video and subscribe to the cargurus uk youtube channel and while we've got you do turn on your notifications so that you don't miss any of our videos